every older generation always thinks that the new generation is some kind of inferior product or something. I'm pretty sure that everyone here has heard their parents or their grandparents or someone else in their family launch into that classic kids these days insert negative stereotype here kind of a spiel, right? Like, I'm pretty confident everyone's heard some kind of a variation on that. So what specifically is our generation being stereotyped with? Well, young people today are often labeled negatively as the self-absorbed generation who likes nothing but their iPhones, while people conveniently overlook the fact that many middle-aged adults are engaging in the exact same behaviors that are being paid solely upon youth. Because when I look at my generation, I don't see all of these negative connotations that people are so worried about. I see people who are joining bands, who are making music, who are creating art and working jobs and volunteering, innovating, and who are playing active roles in their communities every day. They wake up and they go out and they push the boundaries of society and they push their personal boundaries constantly. What we are is a generation of opportunity. Youth today have so much more opportunity in regards to so many things that other generations never even thought of. Today, we're able to be honest about who we are in regards to our appearances, our personalities, and our sexualities. Let's just take a minute and pinpoint one of those subjects. So regarding specifically one sexuality, Mr. Kyle Ray, a Canadian politician, stated that my generation didn't come out until at least university. Today, people are coming out in high school, if not grade school. Can everyone just take a minute and imagine what it would be like to have to deny a major part of who you are until at least university? That's for 18, 19, 20 years of your life, of lying admissively to your friends, to your family, and in many cases to yourself, just because the generation you were born into didn't give you the opportunity to express who you are. <laughs> in no way is that healthy or is it logical. Because how can a society expect to be honest and a government transparent if so many of its participants are forced to lie to fit in? If you're born in an atmosphere of oppression in which you feel like you have to lie just to fit in, as if lying is your method of self-defense and communication, that's going to continue on throughout the rest of your life. This then creates a community of liars where a lie becomes more acceptable than the truth is. But today's generation, we have the opportunity to actually be honest about who we are and to create a generation that reflects our honesty instead, instead of just demonstrating a debilitating need for conformity that benefits no one. Now, in direct relation to the idea of us being one of the first generations able to be honest about who we are, we also have the opportunity to really explore and shape ourselves into the people who we want to be. If you take a look at past generations, there was a lot more of kind of a specific mold you had to fit into. Like, you would finish school and you would jump right into a steady job as soon as possible in order to start a family. That was kind of your accepted social norm. But today, you see people doing different things. Whereas in the past, the idea of taking a year off to travel or working random jobs or trying to open up your own business, maybe just working out of your basement, doing whatever you want to do, that would have been frowned upon in the past or thought to be impractical. But when you take a, a look at youth today, it's so much more common to see a young person doing something like taking a year to travel to a far off country where there's a foreign language and an alien culture just to experience an entirely new way of life. And the positive effects that taking on, taking on an opportunity like this can have on an individual are immense. By taking a risk like this, it allows someone to become so much more independent and so much more open. By taking advantage of these opportunities, and in many cases these risks that we have available to us, we have the opportunity to change how we view ourselves, how we present ourselves, and we also get to broaden our global perspective. We no longer just kind of accept what 
you know, a parent or a teacher or another figure tells us at face value because that's our only option. We're actually able to go out and experience what they're telling us and to make our own ideas and decide what we want to believe and what we think is important to us. Youth today have the opportunity to take advantage of all these opportunities that other generations didn't have to make personal and emotional connections that we can then bring back to our own communities and allow to have an exponential impact on other things. Also, when you look at occupations, in the past, things were so much more limited. It wasn't like you were, you were choosing the future that really interested you. You were doing what seemed like you could make decent money at or it was, you know, the sustainable idea. Whereas how it is today is youth are trying to take the time and figure out what they're really passionate about. And when you think about it, shouldn't that be everyone's goal? To find out what it is that you are truly passionate about and puts light in your eyes when you tell others about it. That kind of passion is so vital to a society, to an economy, to a community. Because when you think about it, if you're waking up in the morning and you love what you do, you're going to be really good at it. Because you're going to enjoy what you're doing and you're going to want to keep on doing it. And that's what youth today are trying to pinpoint, to find out what they like doing. Whereas in the past, in terms of occupations, for other generations, it was like their occupational future was this hallway that was lined with doors. But only one of the doors was actually unlocked them. So many of the limitations, like sex or race or language or following in a family footstep or just trying to pick that sustainable occupation, those limitations that other generations were faced with are obsolete to us today. We no longer have to settle for that one open door. All of them are open to us, and if we want, we can take a peek in one and see what that path looks like, go down it a little, and if we decide that's not the path I want to live, you can keep on trying and trying and trying until you find the thing that you are really passionate about. And that's so important. Like, if you are doing what you love, that has such a positive impact on all parts of your generation and your community. Moving away from occupation, this generation also has a lot more opportunities in regards to their familial life and decisions. Whereas in the past, starting a family was basically an assumed factor of your life. It was assumed that you would graduate school, uh, you would grow up, and you would start a family. You would have your kids, you would have your pet dog, and you would have that lovely little white picket fence to boot. Like, that was just your accepted social norm. That was what you were going to do. But today, our generation isn't just constrained to that. If a couple decides, hey, we don't want to have kids, or if an individual decides, I don't really want to get married, then that's OK in today's society. Our worth isn't measured in if you have a baby or if you have a spouse anymore. And that's good, because family decisions are something extremely personal that someone shouldn't feel coerced into by society or by someone else's unreal expectations. We have the opportunity to decide what will make us happy. And if you do find happiness in having a family, then you can do that. But if you don't, then you no longer have to feel as afraid that you're going to be ostracized by your family or by outsiders for making a choice that will make you happy. We, we aren't no longer just viewed as one aspect alone, like seen only as a mother or seen only as a father, but are instead viewed as a multitude of our traits, of our experiences, and the factors that actually matter. And people appreciate that. There's a quotation said by sociologist and philosopher Emil Durkheim that states, each new generation is reared by its predecessor. The latter must therefore improve to improve its successor. But to me, this quote is only somewhat true. We may have been influenced heavily by the generation before us, but we still have the opportunity to interpret the teachings that they've passed to us and take a hold of every chance we have to have a positive impact on things that don't just implicate our generation alone, but implicate the world as a whole. 
we have the opportunity to realize the positive potential that youth have in the modern world and the opportunity to have a positive effect on things globally, on things throughout all generations. Today's generation has the opportunity to become who we want to be. And in doing so, we also have the opportunity to make society what we want it to be. Thank you so much for your time.